The skies have finally cleared for tonight. Now it's been snowy, it's been rainy, it's been overcast every single day of the month so far. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting just a night of clear. It's gonna be cold, it's gonna be probably a little bit breezy as we just had a snowstorm pass through, but that's okay, we get what we get. For this one-nighter though, it will be a challenge, but I'm definitely up for it. In the month of January, I set out to capture a few different targets in the night sky, but obviously with no clear weather, it has left me void of capturing any of these beauties. So tonight, we're going after two different targets with two different rigs, the Horsehead Nebula and the Crab Nebula. The first rig is going to include my beloved Celestron 9 and a quarter, coupled with a Hyperstar on the front, giving us an F2 focal ratio for fast star imaging. I'm going to attach my ZWL-183 cooled camera to it. That's going to deliver us a smaller field of view, which is going to frame the horse head a little bit better for us. Now this is going to sit on top of my AM-5 mount, which is going to be my second go around at this mount, as the first one seemed defective, so I did have to return it and get a new one. We're going to be putting the IDAS NBZ Nebula Booster filter on there to cut out the light pollution, since I am about a Bortle 8 sky here. What that's going to do for us, it's going to allow us to cut down that light pollution and deliver that rich hydrogen structure of the horse head and the surrounding region. That gives us that beautiful red glow on the camera chip. The Horsehead Nebula is a favorite among the astrophotography community, and just like you, it is one of my favorites too. Unfortunately, I've only gotten to capture it one time previously, and that was when I was first starting astrophotography. I was able to capture it for about 45 minutes or so with my Comet Hunter telescope. And while it's not a half bad photo, I definitely want to outperform it this time around. If you want to capture the Horsehead Nebula for yourself, you're going to need a wide field telescope. Something in the 300 to 500 millimeter range is going to be optimal to capture the entire Horsehead region that you're looking for, especially if you also want the Flame Nebula in there as well. If you don't though, of course you can increase your focal length and get nice and up close with the Horsehead structure itself. Now the second rig is going to be simple, there's no heavy lifting, there's no frills, there's no auto guiding, there's really no mountain setup really, it's because we're using the Sea Star on the Crab Nebula. The ZWO Sea Star S50 has a small chip inside which is going to deliver us a relatively more narrow field of view which is going to be optimal for the Crab Nebula. Because the Crab Nebula is so small, we're going to need usually a telescope of a thousand millimeters or more, but I have seen a few people take really nice images of the Crab Nebula using their Sea Star, so I thought, what the heck, why not. So we're gonna see what it can do on the Crab Nebula and see what kind of results I can get from the front yard in Bortle 8. With the Crab Nebula, the supernova structure that's within gets illuminated a little bit better using a narrowband filter, which is kind of exciting. So we should be able to capture a couple of different colors with it with that filter in. Now, I have never captured the Crab Nebula personally. I've just seen all the amazing photos that you guys have taken before. But tonight, I'm going to attempt my first rendition of the Crab Nebula. Whether it's good or bad, <laughs> that's what we're going to find out. But that's what astrophotography is all about. Let's just hope that this one night of clear sky gives us enough clarity and detail with the seeing and the transparency that we can capture these photos with high resolution. Mm -hmm. 